Welcome aboard, folks, and welcome back to our regular viewers. My name is Rod. I'm an airline pilot with one of our nation's leading legacy carriers here in America. I've been flying for about 20 years, and for the first time in 20 years, I flew a biplane. Today's video was made possible by the generosity of Captain Stan. Captain Stan is a, a fantastic captain we have here with uh, the company, a coworker of mine, and he is the owner of a Great Lakes TA2 biplane aircraft, and it's in fantastic condition. It is a beautiful aircraft, and we did fly together, which was wonderful, and I recorded it, so I have it for you. Now, we're brand new to recording videos in flight. Now, that is a direction that I'd like the channel to go to, of course, as we're bringing you more and more content, and would like to bring you some of that, you know, real live action, uh, in-flight feel, and talking about all those wonderful things we could talk about, about flying. But uh, I haven't done much of that, so that was my very first one. I have some new equipment coming in, which will assist me in recording even a higher quality audio, though I think you will enjoy what we have to bring you here thoroughly. So a little bit about the aircraft. Uh, I didn't know much about it. I'm not sure how much you know about it. However, it dates back to 1929 with the Great Lakes Aircraft Company. And this aircraft was the most successful American-made aerobatic trainer from the 30s to the late 60s. So it endured through uh, a very, you know, a long span of time, and it lived. The company lived through some very tumultuous times, uh, you know, the Great Depression, World War II, and all of that stuff. So it, it definitely had a lot happening in its history. It did unfortunately go out of uh, business, I believe around 1972. They ended up having a ton of parts left over, which then I think a different company bundled it up and sold it to builders as kits. The model we're flying here was built in 1979, known as the uh, TA-2, and it is the Great Lakes biplane. It is uh, a kit aircraft built back then, and it's still running even after all those years, and it's still in great condition. Now, I was very excited to, to be able to fly an open cockpit aircraft. There were multiple things going on, of course. I mean, you had the open cockpit, you had the biplane. I was trying to get this you know, good quality video for you guys and audio and everything. So there was a lot going on. It was, it was very exciting. Very liberating, very wonderful to fly an open cockpit aircraft. I have flown it in the past, but it's been it's been a long time. It's been about 15 years or longer, 16 years since I've had the opportunity to fly an airplane like that. So definitely a wonderful experience and great to come back to it. A little bit about the engine primarily, because it is a radial engine and we don't see a lot of radial engines out there. So radial engine is when the cylinders are all on the outside and you can see them and it makes a circle to those of us that, to those of you that are not familiar with it. So you look at it from the outside and it just it just makes a circle with the cylinders all on the outside and they all spin the, the crankshaft in the middle, the propeller um, in the middle there. They're all linked together, of course. Uh, not directly, I'm not gonna get too technical into it, but that that's the gist of it. The engine though, the engine was pretty cool because it was made by uh, Warner and it's called the Super Scarab. And this particular version was the SS-165. And it does make 165 horsepower. The original uh, engine on the aircraft on the Great Lakes made only 85 horsepower. So this one was a lot more powerful at 165. Having flown the aircraft, a fantastic amount of power for the airplane, incredible. It, it performs really well, it takes off really fast. Even though it was a um, a uh, short grass field, I don't know. We were we were off the ground and like it felt like less than a thousand feet. That was fast. The engine, 
is a seven-cylinder air-cooled radial piston engine. And it was uh, certified in 1939. It was also used in the Cessna. I don't want to mess these up for you, so I'll just read it real quick. It was in the military version. It was the UC-94. In the civilian version, it was called the Airmaster C-39. And it was also utilized in a few other different aircraft. And I'm speaking particularly about that SS-165 that I told you about. Another really interesting fact about this engine was that it was used in the Sikorsky R4. The Sikorsky was founded by Igor Sikorsky, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, from Sikorsky Helicopters. And it was the world's first mass-produced helicopter that was used first helicopter to be used by the Army, the United States Army Air Forces, as well as a few different um, Air Force. The Coast Guard as well had it. United Kingdom had it. So this SS-165 is a very historical engine. I mean, it was in the Great Lakes Airplane, which is in and of itself, uh, you know, has a rich history. And then it was implemented in this uh, in this helicopter called the R-4, which was the world's first mass-produced helicopter. So a lot of history uh, with this engine, a lot of history with this airplane. And uh, let's just go into the flight and take a look. Here we go. I hope you like it. Can you hear me okay? I got you loud and clear. Check, one, two, check. Got you loud and clear. Now, I started getting a lot of cracking noise. You might have to hold your uh, hand over the top of the mic keep the wind from whipping across it. Roger. Because it'll break the well to give us a lot of popping. Mine does the same thing. Roger that. Check, one, two, check. Say that one more time. This takes you back to the 1930s. Fantastic. The way they used to do it. Yeah, we've got space for you in front of the restaurant if you want to come down here. <laughs> in the yell? Yes. Okay, sure. Um, where at? I'll come meet you in the Ranger. Super. Sometimes people don't realize I can't see where I'm going. Where am I speaking? Oh, yeah. No, I, I, <laughs> I realize you can't see where you're going. <laughs>
first time that I actually end up uh, flying out of here, uh, GA, private, without having, uh, you know, <laughs> on a jet airplane or working. The world looks a lot different when you're not uh, IFR cross country. What, what kind of visibility do you have right now? Uh, you, oh, you, this is 10 miles plus. No, I mean, I mean like uh, from the back seat. Oh, well, I can see the back of your head. <laughs> I can see that far. <laughs> oh, that's comforting. That's what my wife likes this airplane better than the other one. She doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't have to look at the back of my head. <laughs> yeah, this is a VIP spot right here for sure. in a hurry. Yeah, I could tell. <laughs> you throttle back and it came running. Hey, traffic 73725, left downwind.
Exactly where you're going. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to lose your brakes going down this. Woohoo! Fantastic flight. That was beautiful. Well, thank you for sharing. Uh, uh, have, we have more fun doing this. I've flown 15 kids in one day. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the 182, but. It's amazing, man. It's amazing. Yeah, 182. I can have five hops, three kids each. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's not as much fun. I like taking off the cub. Yeah, absolutely. Welcome back to the studio, folks. I really hope you've enjoyed that flight. Uh, I know I did. It was tremendous uh, to have that opportunity and to be out there. Um, of course, when I was flying, I couldn't record it for you because I didn't have a GoPro stuck anywhere on the flight deck or in the cockpit or on the windshield there. I didn't have it, so it will... Um, that part of me flying will, was not recorded this one instance. Hopefully we can record future instances. Um, definitely appreciate you sharing your time with us. Please do like and subscribe, share this video with all of your aviation friends so that we can grow this channel and I can bring more amazing content for you. We have some awesome things coming, some awesome ideas that we're implementing. It is tremendously challenging and tremendously fun. So thank you for sharing your time and until next time, fly safe.